Jolantru, greetings. Welcome to Shadow Star, members of the Federation and her allies. Welcome to this Starship visual review video. Please sit back, get comfortable, grab your beverages. I've got my tea, El Grey hot. <laughs> and I think it's time for us to start discussing this ship. There are many things I could say about her straight off the bat and I will just announce right now that this is a stats review video. The visual review will follow and will be linked below if you are interested. But right now we just can discuss what she can do. This will take three main steps. We'll take a quick look at her actual customization and then go straight into her physical stats, discuss her trait and console, plus additional console combinations with the full three piece set and a possible bonus console that you could add on top to give this ship some extra firepower and oomph. We then will also discuss exactly the versatility of the ship as a result while taking her into combat. After the combat, we will then finalize and summarize the thoughts on this ship. Now, luckily this time round, we are not comparing the Inquiry class to any other ships. If you want to see the versus review of all this ship, that can be linked, will be linked, but <laughs> yeah, let's just take note. This is a very expensive promo ship. So before we get into the stats, here is her visuals. The basic covering. Hold on two, five, six seconds. <clears throat> Something's not quite right here. So, as you will have just noticed, I appear to be missing her skin. Now, I just want to take a quick tip note. I didn't know this bug existed. Ah, there we go. We have her at least in here. Whew. So, there does seem to be a small bug where the inquiry is not showing up under templates. Hopefully, that will be fixed quick enough. The Inquiry class herself, sorry, Inquiry class, I apologize, I am English, I say it's slightly different. The Inquiry class will have her windows along with the Avenger windows and the various other window types seen across the generation since the tier 6 was introduced. We also have, quite hilariously, for this ship, her own unique hull type, which I'm struggling to spot. There it is. So we do have the Inquiry's hull. This can be then combined with the legendary hulls for the Defiant Galaxy Intrepid, which uh, stands out like a sore thumb, Sovereign and the Sovereign Refit which I do think adds a nice refreshing taste to the ship, especially considering those nacelles look like they are a merger between Sovereign and Akira. So yeah, that's a thing. We also have the NX and the NX available hold types to it. Type zero, if you want to give it a TOS feel, I'm not sure why you would. The kind of outdated could use a visual overhaul lesser types. Type 5 being the most beautiful of them all. Type 6, Type 7, we all know where these ones are going. Type 8, Type 8B. Upgrade if you do like a more chrome version of the Inquiry's hull type, since it's very similar. And Veteran. We then also have the Avenger hull. For those unaware of the Avenger, the Avenger is actually the original body model. Here is the Avenger, and the Avenger hull was just her secondary unique hull type. Yeah, thing to note for the ship. Now, that's something we will go right now on to say stats-wise. This ship is a promo variant of an R&D ship. 
some of you may consider this kind of a bad thing, some of you may consider this a good thing, I know my standings, I'm not going to go back to the versus review, so right now, I'm simply going to ignore it. What I will tell you guys is that, much like I've called this ship the USS Copy Paste, it is from Picard, and it does have the copy paste, it is the copy paste ship, with both nacelle types. So if you were a fan of a different variant of nacelle, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I won't be doing that. You do have the beta nacelle, the secondary nacelle type available to you if you wish. Now that I've spent five minutes talking about the awkwardness of the visuals within Picard, and also STO, I guess, let's actually get onto her stats. Now, as I was previously stating, she is an overlay on the Arbiter class, which is a tier 6, and thus the Avenger class, which is a tier 5. This is where she gets her three-piece console set from. She uses not only her own console, but the tier 6 Arbiter's console and the tier 5 Avenger's console. Great ships, great thoughts to take in mind. When we get to the end, I will discuss simply which is better getting overall but hey this ship in query <laughs> the inquiry class i guess it is a tier 6 battle cruiser type and thus can use the battle cruiser allowed cloaking system that the federation have if you have it with a hull modifier of 1.45 this is pretty damn strong and something not to um overly dismiss in comparison to many other ships mm. many other ships she also has a shield modifier of 1.15 this gives her great defense as well not quite up there in the overwhelming you won't take her shields down but <laughs> well I won't be the one to point out that shields are both versatile and inversatile depending on the build you've used. When she's at level 65, her top hull capacity at base will sit in at 65,250. Of course, you can modify this and hopefully build it up to have a bit of a stronger hull should you desire. But overall said, that is a pretty damn good strong hole and will help her stay in the fight longer. She has a turn rate of 8, which this is pretty good among barrel cruisers and gives her some flexibility in engagement considering her attack style and has an impulse modifier of 0.15 with an inertia of 40. Now I have stated before in the versus review that I prefer higher inertia rating, so this is negative to me, but I understand that there are many people that like a lower inertia rating. Taking the inertia in with the turn rate does mean you at least get some flexibility with emotion, but maintaining a broadside swing on a ship may be a little bit more difficult. She has the great abilities of bonus power plus 15 to weapons, plus 5 to shields and plus 10 to engines, matching my personal favourite miracle worker battle cruiser, the Shepherd class. So she falls in quite well there. Ignoring the fact that the Shepherd class is a Zen ship. She has 5 forward and 3 aft weapons, as per typical to a battle cruiser. Personally speaking, I feel like they should have done a little bit more maybe with her to make her a tougher, more fitting promo ship considering what she costs to get. But I'm going to ignore that part until the end of these stats. I'll tell you the costs in a second. She has three device slots. And finally, before we go into bridge officers, let's just discuss the one strongest aspect of her that I'm going to flash up a little bit right now. She has a very strong ability in her Miracle Worker special abilities. These are a group of unusual abilities that will randomly select themselves and require you to use a certain free 
bridge officer abilities. These can be tactical, science, or engineering. It could be any of them. So it's always good in your build with this ship to have a fair number of both to give yourself the optimum ability to proc these abilities. And some of these are a little bit meh, but there are some abilities in here which are extremely strong and will enable you to punch out very, very high DPS in a short pace, space of time. Making the Miracle Worker Battle Cruiser probably one of the strongest areas to be and actually is why this ship is so strong. Along with being a Miracle Worker type battle cruiser that the Inquiry is, she gains a, another advantage there with her consoles. And this is another thing she shares with the Se Shepherd class with, by having four tactical, five engineering, and two science consoles, plus, very beautifully, one universal console slot. This gives you the opportunity, if you wish, to go for a 453 which will give a great scientific DPS ability alongside a great tactical DPS. You can go heavy in the tank range and go what I would say is probably a recommended tank build, I guess, of a 552. This doesn't really mean that you're going to be great there with your science procs, but your engineering tankiness and your tactical DPS will be high enough that you can make yourself a quite strong tank with this ship. Thankfully with the whole modifier that will also come in handy. And if you really wanted to you could go insane and make this ship almost impossible to kill with a 462. But I'm not sure why you'd overkill your engineering consoles that much. I'm sure someone can explain a good reason to do it to me. I can't think of one. Now, to discuss the bridge officers, and this is where this ship gains its a little gimmick that gives her a good advantage. And for some people, is reason enough to be trying to get this ship. I'm gonna be honest, I got very lucky. Very, very lucky. So, I put some happiness here. Her bridge officer positions are as set a lieutenant commander tactical sorry lieutenant commander tactical commander engineering miracle worker of course we were expecting that one it's a pretty damn strong position to have as well lieutenant science <coughs> Doesn't really matter, kind of meh, can throw it in the trash bin if you really want to. Ens Ensign Universal. But then, this is what the people like. She also has a Lieutenant Commander Universal position. But it isn't just any Universal, it's an Intelligence type Universal position. Meaning, if you wish, you can use an Intelligence Bridge Officer there. And... As many will know, and I will consistently state, some of the strongest specialists are the Miracle Workers and the Intels. They are my two preferences. And I'm just going to say right now, I do feel like this makes this ship a lot stronger than her predecessors. You see, the Shepherd class is a Miracle Worker only. Basically the same bridge officer layout, but they're all Miracle Workers. The Avenger, sorry, the Arbiter, her predecessor, the Inquiry's predecessor is, well, an Intel position and that's it. This ship boasts great advantages by having the Intel Miracle Worker and will allow her to deal out a fair amount of damage. With this being said, and before we get into the consoles and thusly her trait as well, let's just discuss the cost of the ship. Well, first of all, I did check the exchange. Upon checking the exchange, there were seven ships in there. Of those seven ships, five of them were at the maximum 1.5 billion. One of them was <laughs> 1.4999. Okay, you can guess where that one's going. And one of them, jump in there quick if it's still there, was at 1.1 billion. 
I'm joking, by the way. I just don't believe this ship is worth that much, especially when you've got a £20 slash £25 Arbiter Avenger fleet variant you can get. That would be, well, personally speaking, just as good as this ship stats-wise, slightly weaker hull. Probably better everywhere else, minus bridge officers. Or you could even go with that with the Shepherd, should I say. If you went with the Shepherd Gargarin Miracle Worker, you, uh, yeah. No, that that one definitely stands a, stands way on board against this one. With the one exception of bridge officers again. So, if you are interested in this ship and you are looking to spend, be wary that what you are paying for with this ship the the balance you're going to make is is the hull modifier shield modifier and intel bridge officer position worth it to you because that's what you're actually paying for you're paying for those differences otherwise they're all on board with the shepherd and therefore anything over 20 pounds that you pay that 20 pound everything over 20 pounds you pay to get this ship uh, is basically the expense you're making for the intel and hull slash shield so let's get on now ignore the fact this is an r&d promo ship and uh extremely low drop rate and i know they say it's one in a hundred i might agree with that one considering the amount i spent this time and how many lock boxes i actually opened but okay these are Actually, I can agree with that time because I actually got this ship within 100 lockboxes. So, hey, that was fair. I'll give him that. Sorry, 100 promo boxes. So, yes, I am distracting myself here. What you're seeing on now on the screen is her basic equipment. What's in the engineering is her own console. In size position is a optional console you can get from a Dreadnought or a Escort. Depends on which one you want to buy. And the last two are her lesser self consoles. So let's discuss them. First of all, we're going to ignore all and just go straight for the optional console. This is the cloaking device. The only reason I'm showing you this here right now is because this cloaking device, which you're going to get from the Defiant class or from the, I believe it's Galaxy Dreadnought, will give you at least a decent amount of boost with using ambush maneuvers or at least a high level of cloaking ambush damage output for an initial barrage. Just something you might want to think considering the ta tactical aspect of this ship. Now the actual console that comes with this ship is the very versatile, I've been told, but I'm not 100% in agreement with, Variable Assault Deflector Array. This has the passive ability of plus 22.8 flight turn rate, which is great to throw onto just about any other ship if i'm going to be honest with a plus 15 to phaser damage now let's be straight this is a pretty damn good for the federation i am very much hoping the klingons will be able to use this console as we are currently in the year of the klingon so i'm yeah i did just say that i should have called this the uss joke um we're in the year of the klingon so i'm really hoping this console comes to klingons in some manner with disruptor damage, but I will cover that if it does. We should also take into note what this power, this console can do actively, which is a phaser cone blast, very, very similar to the cone blast attack that you may know from the Galaxy Dreadnought when you performed Sorcerer Separation. This cone blast does about the same level of damage of 5,993.2 phaser damage to all foes to foes in the forward arc. I do believe this hits all foes, but I know the Galaxy Dread does not hit all foes over a certain number. Also, the further away the target, the less damage it will deal. I do note that it uh, doesn't appear to be saying that here, but I've in practice with the Cone Blast, that is what I have come to find. Also, when you're taking when taking weapon damage to forward facing shields while this is active you will heal 93.75 of that damage oh sorry heals 93.75% of that damage taken for 20 seconds 
So essentially, the incoming damage is reduced down to just under 7%. Now, I can see a bonus to that. I can see how that's very strong. It does mean that while this is active, you take very little damage to the forward arc and you are dealing a large amount of damage out. So this is a very strong console offensively. And by all theories, makes this console very useful to almost any DPS or Federation phaser type build. Just something to keep in mind. I did kind of bash this console in some regards. I will explain why that happened. But let's get down to the next consoles in order to explain how I bashed this in a little regard. So next up, to combined up with the full 3 p set, we have the console of the Tier 5 Avenger. If you have the Tier 5 Avenger, you can throw this console on. Um, bearing in mind, guys, that the Tier 5 Avenger costs you, uh, I believe, about £16 to get. This is not including the Arbiter right now. So, if you want this console as well to make use of the full 3 p set, the variable auto-targeting armament, <laughs> funny that it's got a very similar name, will introduce the quantum mode. Now, this isn't 100% right because it should give you a few other modes, but we're not going to go through that right now. The quantum mode gives you a high-yield AoE damage with projectile point defense over a 90 degree arc. So what's it going to do? Well, creates two level 66 quantum armament projectiles. These will deal 16,096 kinetic damage my, um, plus any boosting you're doing to kinetic damage with a 20% shield penetration in a 1.5 kilometer radius. That's pretty damn strong to be fair. That is, I think on par with a tri-cobalt device. I'm gonna check that Um, Actually, let's check that with a quantum device first. Hello, quantum. Okay, so it's a fair bit stronger than a quantum. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not seem to have Oh, I do. Hello there. Yep, so it's kicking up harder than a quantum device. So that's not bad as a random console. It's kicking up a lot harder than a quantum than a tricobalt device. The quantum armament projector also fires micro quantum torpedoes every one second at enemies within 10 kilometers. That deals 817 kinetic damage again can be boosted by the correct damage boosting console so this is one of those consoles to combine up with say I do believe it is the quantum boosting console quantum damage boosting and that will allow you to do more damage if you wish with this specific well universal console on to the Arbiters console. Now this one, this is where we gain the argument for, okay, is shield something you really want to worry about? A lot of people will say it's impossible to keep the shields up really in a good fight, but then you'll have your shield tanks that will turn around and go, what are you talking about? Especially your shield regenerators. They lose a huge amount of their shield damage, but recover shield so quick, they do, it almost looks like they don't lose shields at all. This depends on the build and also depends on whether you want to spend the extra £20 to get this console if you don't already have the Arbiter. Well, you can see where I'm going with this ship right now, can't you? This three-piece console set doesn't just include you taking a gamble to get it or spending a huge amount in the exchange. You will also be spending about £30, over £30, to get the other two console pieces if you wish to use this ship. And that is, you're spending about £30 to get two ships that if you don't already have them, 
you probably won't use because let's be fair i will be honest the inquiry is kind of well is a better ship than the arbiter just not price wise and as a result if you have the inquiry you're going to use the inquiry so why would you use the arbiter why would you use the avenger it's a bit of a shame that you've got to um pay out to get these consoles for it however is there a use behind it well the ablative shield generator is going to give you a passive five percent shield resistance that will also improve your shield regeneration by ten percent so as i was just noting this is great for your shield tanks and your shield regenerator builds the active ability is the secondary shield and damage absorption slash hole and shield heal absorbs 16,890.6 points of damage for 45 seconds and upon expiration will do plus 18,750 hit points and plus 7,500 to shield regeneration applied for every facing shield so let's each separate shield will gain 7,500 itself not across all shields which actually means that's quite a high number. We're hitting 28,000 there for the shields. It's not bad. Admittedly, if the shields hit maximum, you lose out on that. So you're probably better off having that trigger when your shields are nearly out. Oh, probably not a great thing there then. Now let's get into why I'm discussing the cost of actually getting all the consoles. Because I can't really... <sighs> discuss this shit without doing this. This is the three piece set bonus so let's take in mind you've taken the chance you've got the inquiry you've spent however much that costs you be it five five pounds to three hundred pounds you've spent you've gambled you maybe bought it from the exchange you got it you want to get part of the console set what can you attain from this at two piece level you gain deadly maneuvers this gives you plus 15 to all weapons damage and plus 33 percent to flight turn rate absolutely great to be fair this is a great ability and i would actually say having a tier 5 and tier 6 zen ship consoles are worth it on getting the two-piece set it's why i actually got the avenger after i got the arbiter was to have that two-piece set Free piece set gives you toughest and fastest. Good old quoting Riker going on here. What does that mean for you? At the free piece, you gain plus 15% to maximum hit points. Um, still doesn't tell you exactly what it means by that. I'm going to assume that that's your overall hull hit points. And plus 15% to your flight speed. This is great for tanks. So at the free piece level, you gain an ability that's more useful for tanks. So if I'm honest, if I'm absolutely honest, I would probably be considering only going for a two-piece set, unless you're going for a little bit more defense, in which case you might want to consider the three-piece set, but please bearing in mind, the Avengers console does not have any passive effects, and therefore it may be more beneficial to be going with the Arbiter and Inquiries console set rather than the actually more versatile more powerful awkwardly to say avenger and inquiries console set it's just something we need to keep in mind when we consider the builds and the use of the consoles my word i don't ever think i've done a review where there's been that much to say about simply considering the consoles Ugh. Because I've never had to do a Zen ship comparison to a goddamn blasted promo ship. What are they doing? We ever took over the uh, Ferengi side of STO? Well, he's definitely the Grand Nagus that's taken over that. Well, trait wise, now I have a problem with this trait, and that is it's not the trait of the Arbiter. The Arbiter's trait is amazingly good. It is, to this day, 
We're in STO, one of those traits which is just almost a need-be-have trait. It's a, or practically a must I've heard for DPS builds. It's very useful to tank builds and I strongly suggest it for the support elitists. Um, does that even exist? I strongly suggest it under support builds to have the Arbiter's trait. I was hoping this trait would live up to that hype, but unfortunately I strongly feel like it doesn't. The only way it does is the fact that with the right officers being set to your um, continuous function, this comes into a second level. And that is because with the right officers, you can gain a cooldown time by using emergency power to shield. Now this tray itself uses emergency powers of shields to grant a secondary shielding and a weapon's haste. Overall that sounds really strong. The issue comes in line with the fact that the shield strength it gives you is 25,335.9 to the secondary shielding for 30 seconds. It probably isn't going to last that long. In fact, I don't think shield regenerators are even going to really care about this level of secondary shielding. It's probably not going to be useful even to them. If I'm straight up honest, the only people I can see making decent use of this ability are support builds. The fire cycle haste, which is an 8.3% fire cycle haste, which does stack with the Arbiter's trait, is actually quite strong but I know in this stream they made such a big deal out of the fact this stacks but here's the thing I'm gonna ask you do you really want to sacrifice another tray off to gain 8.5% stacking to the Arbiter's one when there are other traits that actually do better in this area, better DPS wise, that will also stack with the Arbiter's one and actually give you even higher DPS. All you're really gaining from this trait stacking with the Arbiter's is a little bit extra defense. Which let's be fair, this ship already has quite a lot of. And in general builds, well you would already have quite a lot of. And on that very same note, there are other traits that do the little extra defense better. <coughs> Invincibility. Oh no, sorry. Honored Dead. Yeah, Honored Dead does that an awful lot better. If I'm going to be straight and blunt, this trait really does fall by the wayside with me. This is a very meh trait to me. I'm a bit sad to say that. I'm very lucky to be flying this ship, I will say that. But I'm not gonna be over I'm not gonna be using this trait myself. Could be using the console. Likely gonna be using a two-piece build. In fact, I think it's time that I stop boring you guys with this discussion and I take this ship into an actual fight. I will be using a two-piece build with her. I will not be using cloak. Let's see what we can get out of her. Now that I've given her a quick makeover and I've adjusted her to have a combative build rather than her straight up stock nature, let's take her into battle. The USS copy paste build will be maintaining balanced power settings during this stage of the review. This is to assist with giving a, I want to say a fair view of what she can do and also so that we can see what this ship is going to be like for the majority of the player base rather than just the high-end elites or the entry beginners if entry beginners have managed to get this ship my word you're lucky and i commend you for that one this is so that it's going to be relatively fair the consoles may be at high end but i've selected the traits in such a way that it reduces her capabilities just enough to be fair we're working with a sort of mid-range build so, how is that going to work out against the Jem'Hadar and apparently Cardassians? Well, while we're at it, let's see if we can grab a few targets and uh, play with our food. 
I am using consoles from another ship as well, but that's just because of my natural build type. Also, I quite like this console. It allows for a little bit extra DPS damage. Now then, who would like to play? You. You, I think you're going to take the first blunt of this shot. That didn't take very long. That took even less time. How much damage have you taken? A bit. Let's see what we do now. Hmm. Not very much. I will note though that those shields are holding quite nicely considering I've got balanced power settings. And rebalancing the shields is making it very hard for this silly Gemadar to actually deal any damage. Hmm. I think you have a problem there, Gemadar. I'm uh, going to have to put you out of your misery now. Goodbye. Yeah, that wasn't very nice of me. Okay, let's go after the Galar class. Hopefully in this situation we'll be able to deal relatively fair damage and take this ship down quickly. I'm looking for a 5 second to 10 second kill on the Galar class just to be able to say that yes, this ship is really able to pack out a punch. Again though, I'm not going to increase the output in damage. Right now, into do 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 Get rid of those shields, you little fucker. That was about two to three seconds. Once engaging. Hmm. Not bad at all, actually. Okay, Jemadar Battlecruiser, while not at full strength, let's see how quickly we can take you down. Jemadar's getting a bit more damage in there. Would really appreciate it if you can't... Oi! Looks like we've got some other playboys wanting to play here. This isn't actually doing too bad, considering I'm not taking advantage of any other abilities. That was quick. Quick and expected, and relative damage has been taken, considering the other little buggers decided to chime in. Shall we uh, wipe these boys out? I think we should wipe them out. Hello, Avenger console. Have some fun with that. Eat them up. They are trying. Okay, let's see how well this does for damage. I'll say now that cone is a much larger spread, but um, what I'm kind of disappointed in is that with that larger spread, it actually deals less damage. So what I will say, <laughs> when the armor t comes away from my um, warp coils, Took a fair amount of damage, but not too much, I would say. <sighs> okay. Final talk. Fastest, toughest, strongest of Starfleet. Hmm. Yeah. Ignoring aside that in Picard, really, that should have been Sovereigns, Intrepids, Akira's, Prometheus. <sighs> okay, newest ship of the line, I guess. Uh, let's just send them all to one location and just just that ship. Okay. Scrapping Nickley Forts aside, considering what this ship is capable of, versing, well... This is what we generally see across STO anyway. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit brutal now. Damn, a console has its uses. 
but that active ability is relatively weak. It would appear that that damage output it does isn't necessarily going to be overly effective if it hits shields. And, um... Against hull, it does average-esque damage, I guess. I think from the way that appears to bleed out, it deals a set amount of damage to the target and it's not spread about over all targets, but it also definitely weakens over range. So the closer you are to the target, the more damage it will deal. So that's got a benefit to it, but it does mean you want to try and keep the target close. Tractor beam gravity well time, I guess. The trait itself still gets the same sort of faults for me. So if I was going to score them, the console itself gets a 7.5 out of 10, and her trait is going to get a 4 out of 10 from me. Just because I'm being a bit nasty to its fucking trait, it does not live up to the hype of the Arbiter class tier 6, same rank as this ship, just a Zen ship. Shouldn't be like that. This is a promo ship. Its trait should be superior. Console, okay, it's at least on par with the Arbiters and Avengers consoles, so fair play. And the actual two-piece set is very, very strong. And the three-piece set is useful if you wish to use it. I'm not sure which builds it will really apply to. The issue with the two-piece and three-piece set, though, is that if you don't already possess the Arbiter and the Avenger, you will need to buy those ships in order to use the next piece of the console set. That, to me, is a heavy negative, as this ship is already a promo ship and has probably cost you a lot to begin with. Continuing on. This is a promo ship. It's very expensive, over 1 billion in the exchange, and if you're not lucky gambling, you will be spending a lot of real life money or a excruciating amount of your personal time and effort in the Dilithium mines in order to maybe, if you're lucky, just about, oh, here's a hair's wisp, get this ship. I don't think the gamble is worth it. I don't think her step up from the Arbiter makes her worth it. She is a damn strong ship. As a step up from the Arbiter, the way I rank the Arbiter, she does exactly what I say for the Arbiter, exactly the same stats, however, I will give her a great boost up in the defense role and allow her to take a 8 out of 10 as a tank instead of the original 7 which I fought for the Arbiter itself. In the support role she goes from being a 5 out of 10 support ship to being a 7 out of 10 support ship and in DPS much like with the Shepherd and the Arbiter who I both praise the sun will call them 10 out of 10 DPS vessels. This ship, of course, still takes the 10 out of 10 slot and does it spectacularly. However, the, the whole factor that she costs so much is my final say I'm gonna have to put on this ship. She is a huge gamble, she is a huge risk, and to me, that is very much overshadowing the fact that she is a new skin with slightly better stats on top of an original Zen ship. And I can't help but feel that puts an overshadowing cloud on the Inquiry class. I will, however, in the positive manner, say that finally this brings back one of my favorite looking ships into being one of my more usable ships. As I have gotten lucky to get her, I don't want to say exactly how much I spent, but I will say I did get her within 100 boxes. <laughs> what I am going to say right now is that 
having a milk worker variant of the Arbiter is a nice little addition. And you can have a looking pretty damn awesome. She is a smaller sovereign class and an absolute stunning shining point over all things is the fact that she takes the original STO concept art to her design and as a result fits very well into STO with the basic inquiry look, even if her deflector looks like a piece of trash or a drainage grate. Uh, I'll leave that one to you guys. I appreciate what she's capable of, but I do not appreciate the Ferengi Trade Consortium greed infecting STO once again. I strongly believe this should have been a Lobby ship. I will also very much willingly to state that there are Lobby ships that definitely compared to if not beat this ship quite easily. And that's the big concern for me. The fact that there are Lobby ships that are actually stronger. There are better options for ships in the promo pack. But this ship is one of the strong options in the promo pack. That is a positive. If I take all this into consideration, this ship's final score, under my personal opinion, is 8 out of 10. I will enjoy flying her. I'm glad I got lucky enough to get her. Now the question lies... When are we going to get the Klingon one? <laughs> Never forget the year of the Klingon. Kapla! I hope to see you guys next time. With all this being said, thank you for watching to the end of this video. Thank you for supporting this channel in doing so. If you found this useful or have your own things you would wish to say about this ship, please comment below and let me know what your opinion on the ship is. You can be as blue, blue, blunt and truthful as you like. I really don't mind what you say right now. You can, if you completely disagree with me on this ship, tell me. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. If you agree with me, hey, fair game. I'll have a toast to that one. But hopefully, I'm going to get some nice comments to read. Oh, and before I clock out of here, to my patrons and my donors that helped make this video possible, Allow me to say right now, thank you for your unbelievable support. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Remember, live long and prosper, my friends.